Okay, boys and girls, welcome to the channel. We are here again, part two, or attempt two, to go to Amoeba Records. 9 a.m. Saturday morning. I will have to wait in a line. But I'm here early. I will not be denied and refused my chance to blow money. <laughs> so here we are, here's LA, and uh, let's go get in line. This is on Argyle in Hollywood. This is the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Walk of Stars. And uh, here we are at Amoeba. There's the shop. So we're going to spend some time in. And let's hit it. Hey, everybody. So, as you saw in the clip just a moment ago, I did go to Amoeba Records. I made it, second time is the charm. I drove down there this morning to Hollywood and I got in. I got there around 9 a.m. I was the second person in line, so I had the whole store to find whatever I wanted. And um, I found some stuff, a lot of stuff I didn't find. Um, and there's actually a couple things I forgot to look for. It is overwhelming, but let me say first before anything, uh, despite what they say and what the press have said and people, it is much smaller than the previous location. I call BS on that that it's not that much smaller. It's like way smaller. You gotta remember, the other store on Sunset had that second floor of just movies that was massive. Now they have like two aisles. Hip hop, electronica, that kind of, those genres, very small. It's really rock. I mean, it's really for the rock. They have a good jazz section. But before, they had the whole back room for jazz and the whole, this other back room of classical on one side and jazz on the other. I mean, there was tons. Now it's like a little corner. So this whole idea of like, oh yeah, we moved, but despite our smaller footprint, we've really managed to put everything there. I'm calling BS on that. It is smaller by far. Um, but it's still a great place. There's still a lot of great things to find. There's a lot of used stuff. So, uh, with that said, I'm going to share with you what I got because we can't always just talk about Super 73s, headphones, comics. We got to talk about other stuff. And so I've got my big, massive box of them. Now, when you spend enough, they give you a little tote. It's kind of fun. So, uh, there's no order. I'm just going to go through these. Uh, randomly one by one and we'll just I'll just show you what I got and there you go and maybe this is fun for you maybe it's not I want you to tell me what's your holy grail records CDs music that you want what are you looking for and what did I get that you think is cool or maybe I got as lame I, I, I'm willing to hear it okay we're starting with a potential lame or cool I don't know chieftains okay Three dollars, a little pricey maybe for Chieftains. Um, I used to go to Ren Fairs as a kid in uh, up in uh, San Francisco, California. So Ren Fairs, Chieftains, that whole Irish thing is big. I grew up with it. So uh, I had to get a Chieftains. I have like, no Chieftains vinyl. And I love these kind of like music that is more atmospheric, that you can put on. You're not necessarily singing to dancing to, but you're putting it on while you're cleaning or while you're doing stuff, chores, maybe painting, whatever. So um, I got a Chieftains. I had to. I felt like you got to do it, okay? Oh, I had to get some Fella Cootie. You guys know I'm like addicted to Fella Cootie. I wanted to get this. Uh, head. For, this is Coffin head for Head of State. Um, I haven't listened to this, but... I'm basically going to get my Fela Kuti fix at all costs. Fela Kuti uh, is Nigerian, um, Afro-funk, Cubanistic, you know, he, he's, he's the bomb dude. He is, he is the guy. So I'm all about Fela Kuti. Let's just move all that, make it easy. Ugh. Oh, dude. Yeah, I've been wanting the Pink Floyd. So I have Pink Floyd, The Wall, 
and I have uh, the first album I ever bought was Dark Side of the Moon. I think that and Thriller. I was like, okay, I'm getting a record player. I'm getting Thriller and Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> um, wish you were here. This has one. Okay, for my funeral, those of you who go to my funeral, this is for this is in the annals record. This is recorded for history posterity. We got to play this album when I die. That's just that's just the way that's going. I want a second line, like New Orleans style, and I want to play this album. That's that's my requirements. Uh, not that I can do much, I'm dead. But yeah, I had to buy this new Super Pink Floyd's hard to get used. You're just not gonna get used for them. But um, really excited about this remastered. Uh, so it's thick and all that jazz. The 180 vinyl, which is nice because it's not warpy. Uh, excited to hear this a lot. So this is this is one that was on my list for sure. Oh, this these two. Okay, so I may, so I had the limit. I had like my like goal amount, like my budget, and I was almost out the door. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm gonna be like way under my budget. And then I saw these, and I just like said, screw it, and I got them. I stayed within budget, but I could have been under. Dead can dance. Uh, Towards the within and into the labyrinth. I love these albums. Uh, I got into Dead Can Dance. My first wife number X, the X, the mother of my two da older daughters, um, kind of gothy chick. She got me into them. These albums are wonderful. They're both the, they're both reprintings, uh, double CD or double LPs. Really excited about these. They sound great. I love this band. So again, atmospheric, right? Okay. Dude, it's already five minutes. It's gonna take forever. I'll try to go faster, but I want to talk about these. It's kind of fun for me. Uh, <laughs> if only like 19 people watch. Hey man, I'm having fun. It's records. Uh, Cassius, 1999. This is like house music. Uh, this is like on those lists of what are the essential vinyls of electronica house to get. Cassius, 19 uh, is a good one. And this was uh, 28. I see it online for around 35 or so. So not, not, it's okay. It's new. Uh, great album. Really excited about this one. Another good one. Uh, Paul Van Dyke, We Were Alive. This was only two bucks. This is a double, double um, LP live disc. I'm excited because I don't know this. I know Paul Van Dyke from back in the day as a DJ, but I've never heard this particularly. But I said, you know what? It's two bucks. You got to throw the dice. So I'm throwing the dice on a couple things. Oh, I wanted to get a 45. I have no 45s. And I thought, you know what? I mean, let's at least get one. So I randomly grabbed one. This is Ella Fitzgerald, Every Time We Say Goodbye, and Manhattan on one side. Um, excited to just have a 45. And what's, what is nice is they have like these nice like little short boxes of 45s. And that's kind of cool. So I got a 45. Uh, what do you know? Let's check it out. And it even has its little like piece. I don't have to pop out the little center thing. It's kind of cool. Okay. Although I kind of wanted to use that little like jobby. Uh, more. So I got a bunch of clearance stuff. I didn't just buy a bunch of used because I ain't doing that. Uh, Steven Stills, two. Two dollars. I really like Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I liked what he did on um, Buffalo Springfield. Is that what it's called? Buffalo Springfield, I think, with Neil Young. Uh, was it Neil Young? I think so. Um, so this looks nice. I mean, this, this is like classic, like country, folk rock, whatever we, we're calling this now. Um, outdoor rock, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I'm excited to hear this. So this will be kind of fun. Two bucks, right? I, never, I don't have any 10 inch either. So I thought, well, let's get a 10 inch. I, there's a couple like randos. I have no idea what this is gonna be, but this is called Time in Malta. I think it's house music. I think it was in the house or the electronic section. But what I liked about it was, check this out. Just, just the production of this looks really cool. I really like this little thing here. And look, it's got like a little pamphlet -y thing. There's a little information. 
I just like the production of this and it just kind of a cool like stuff. So I don't know. I thought this was kind of neat. And so I got I got this. Um, again, when it's just a couple bucks, I'll throw the dice to there was a lot of stuff I took back to. I was like, oh, do I need this? So I I did weigh things out. Maynard Ferguson, jazz, uh, trumpetist. Um, is that right word? Trumpetist? Or trumpeter? Or trumpetist? Comment below. Uh, <laughs> when I was, I was in marching band, I was in a band, I played trombone, and I remember the trumpet players always talked about Maynard, Maynard Ferguson uh, back in the 90s. And so, I don't know. Let's listen to him. I'm curious about it because I like jazz. So I wanted to get a Maynard, and it was a buck. Come on, let's get a buck for some jazz. Uh, another dollar, golden era of Dixieland jazz. So this is um, just a compilation, different people, nobody specific here that's like ringing out to me, but I do like Dixie, Dixieland stuff, and it's a buck. So, you know. Keely Smith. You might, you might know Keely Smith. She sang with Louis Prima. Uh, who I love, Louis Prima, big band jazz guy. Uh, he does the voice of King Louis in the movie Jungle Book. And she was his wife at one point, and they were a little duo, and they sang in Vegas a lot. And uh, then when they split up, she went off and she did some solo albums. I like her voice. She's got a nice, smooth voice. I like the character they built together, and I'm curious, like, it's a dollar. Let's give it a shot. Okay. I have no idea what this is, but it was $3. It was in the Electronica thing. It's, uh, oh wait a minute, Thrill of the Ritual by David Freak? Hang on, hang on, let's just get the album out. I have no idea, hang on, hang on. What, okay, I know why. So this is really interesting, because it was $3, but what sold me was all this, check this out. So, okay, this is called Oh. Record store day. This LP crashes hard drives. Oh, this is records. This is a record store day thing. Got it. So this is a compilation. That's why it was cheap. Of different songs. It's called this. This LP crashes hard drives, and there's like all these different ones. Um, yeah, I don't know any of these guys, but. So this would be kind of fun, just like a, but what, look what it came with too. It came with a little like comic book zine thing. So I thought that was cool. And it came with this guy here too. I don't even know what this is. So I'm like, it came with all these little peripheral stuff. So I got it. Okay. Sometimes you just get something because it's got all the extra little goodies. Brenda Lee. This was another, this was $3. Wow. I spent three bucks on her. Um, you guys know I love that Ken Burns um, country documentary. By the way, the jazz one, just as good. Um, Brenda Lee is in there multiple times in the country music one. And uh, she was this cute little spitfire little girl and became quite the woman singer. And I thought, let's give it a shot. Let's get some Brenda Lee. So I had to represent a little country. Quincy Jones. Uh, there's a great documentary on Netflix right now called Quincy. Uh, Produced, written by her, his daughter, Rashida Jones, who's the actress that was on the show The Office. After watching that, I was like, dude, Quincy Jones, dude, I'm all about him. So I'm curious what this is. It was three bucks. It's a double LP. Uh, this was in 1973. So it's probably kind of funky, solely stuff. And I think it's just him and his, his arrangements. We'll see. I'm curious. But hey, I had to get some Quincy. I was really curious about this one. Benny Goodman. I like Benny Goodwin much more than, say, like Glenn Miller. Um, there's just that clarinet, dude. I'm digging it. And I like it. He swings. But Benny Goodman swings. This was two bucks. So I'm like, let's get some Benny Goodman. We had to do that. Okay, this is a rant. Okay, this is Juice. This is the World Wrecking Class crew. World Class, sorry. World Class Wrecking Crew. Um, two bucks. Wanted to get this. Just like some like hip hop -y stuff. 
Oh, this was interesting. So one of my goals is to get stuff that I can't get streaming, right? Like, so I have Tidal, but there's a lot of things that you're not going to find on Tidal. Live album, stuff like that. So this was a live album of DJ Shadow. I really like DJ Shadow's Private Press and the first one he did called Introducing. Really love that one. I own that one. And uh, this is like a live album of his, uh, live in Manchester. And I'm excited to check it out. So, um, 2018. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, we'll definitely, I'm excited to see that. This is nostalgic. I just had to get breaking. Breaking, dude. I had to get breaking. It's like, it was a movie in the 84. When was this? 84? 80, 84. Boom. Right on it. Um, this movie changed my life in some ways. I know it sounds silly, but I was living in Arkansas. I mean, there's sections in my comic I'm working on, which you can see on my Patreon, which talks about breaking. Like, it talks about breakdancing and how that was so influential for me in the when, in fifth grade when this came out and all this stuff. And it was like, um, this was like a whole new world when this came out. And uh, I was right in the middle of it, perfect age for it, and uh, even making a comic about it. So I had to get that. Duke Ellington, um, again, another big band jazz guy, big, huge, huge, huge force of power. And so um, it's a double LP, had to get it. Birthday concert, what can you do? So we're gonna get some of that. Okay, Frank Sinatra. I actually have two of these. Here's the other one. I got this one. This is, this is, uh, it doesn't say when. These might be old. Are these both? They're both Cameron. They're both cheap. So this one was four bucks. This one's six dollars. So they're probably, they're not the good ones necessarily. But they're two Frank Sinatra albums. And um, after watching the Quincy documentary on Netflix, I learned that Quincy and Frank were best buds. I then watched the Frank Sinatra documentary on Netflix. You see where this is going? And uh, I really enjoyed that. And then I spent one full day, literally from eight to like four, three maybe, listening to Saint Frank Sinatra. And uh, I'm a convert, so I had to get some cheap Frank Sinatra. And I could have spent, I, there, were, there were other albums that were like 17, 12, but I thought, let me just get a couple cheap ones and just kind of dip my toes. Uh, what is this? Oh, so I don't know what this is. This is like a, this was in hip hop. This is Africa Bambata and Jazzy J. I'm like, what? And they did some kind of, uh, not Jazzy Jeff, Jazzy J. And they did some kind of like, um, like, Hip hop against apartheid thing. So I'm really curious about what this is. We're going to check this out. Um, very curious. Free South Africa. Hip hop against hip hop. So Africa Mbata, you know, might be really good. Uh, Count Basie. So I got some Duke Ellington. And I wanted to get Count Basie, who's another one of the big band leaders, you know. Um, four bucks, can't go wrong. And it's and it's uh, Lester Young, who's a great... Um, Lester Young worked with Billy Holiday a lot, and they had a relationship that was a little um, conflictual, I guess, at times. Um, yeah, I'm excited about about this. This will be fun. Okay, here's some here's some randos. I have no idea what this is. This was in the electronica. So they had all this like used electronica, but which I really like. But I don't know the bands. I don't know the, the DJs. So this is called... Uh, what is this called? Oh, it's called Take... What? Something in Concrete? Hang on. I don't know what this is called. Let me, give me a second. Is it two LPs? I guess it's, it's two LPs. Take Earthstones and concrete I have no idea dude I have no idea but whenever I see two LPs I always get it just because it's like oh there's more it's like quantity four bucks I'm rolling the dice who knows maybe I love it 
Uh, in the same vein, $3, mystery, don't know what it is. It's called, and look at the packaging. Again, I really like this like weird tab. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I geek out on, the creativity of packaging and, 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 and stuff like that. So what is this album? Okay, here we go. This is, uh, huh? I can't even read this. I don't even know. I, I can't even read it. Can you guys read what that is? I don't know. It's something mysterious. Oh, wait. It's embossed slightly. It says, Musik aus Strom. Okay, it's German. Okay, from Hamburg. That's interesting. It's kind of spooky. We'll see. Two more. LCD sound system, uh, which I thought would be in rock, but it was in electronica. Uh, I think this is their, this isn't their debut album, but I think this is like their major first album, if you can call that. I really like these guys. I wanted to get, um, what was it called? Sound of Sliver? Silver? Sliver of Silver, I think it's called. I wanted to get that one, they didn't have it. This one's really good though. I'm kind of excited. It was new though. Maybe I shouldn't have bought this. This one might have been a border border. One. And last one. Brand new The Smiths. I love The Smiths. Again, got that from the first wife. Uh, I don't know this. This was new. It's not on digital, so I got something that will that would be kind of unique. It is a double LP. It's colored. That's kind of cool. Um I'm not really into the colored thing. Why am I gonna pay 10 more bucks for the colored? If they had a, a black one, I would've got the black. I'm not into that, but whatever. Uh, one LP is them singing all their songs live, like Hand in Glove, Charming Man, What Difference Does It Make, Pretty Girls Make Graves, you know, Handsome Devil, all those great ones. And then the second one is, looks like covers from different people. Um, so I'm kind of interested about the covers. I would rather just have them be live both, but that's okay. So excited about the mini faces of the Smiths. There you go. That was a little long. That is all my albums and I'm done. Probably will not go back to Amoeba for a little while because I used up all my reserves. <laughs> and this will take me a while to listen to all this, but thank you all for watching. Remember, if you want to support this channel, support me. First things first, subscribe. Second thing, go look at my Patreon. You don't have to be a member to see a lot of the great content. But if you do, for $1, you not only get access to all my comics and all my scripts and writings and stuff, but you also get to be involved in what videos I do on these channels. So you get to, as a patron, say, hey, I want you to talk about blah, blah, blah. And I'll do it. There you go. So you get to be the producer of the content. How about them apples? Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Have a good one and take care.